The times are changing and so is the world around you. At CBM University, we help you prepare for the future like we have with more than 10 lakh students. Come join the education legacy of 75 years. CVM University, enlightening the future generations. The times are. So we are going to start the session. So good afternoon to all participants. Again, I am Professor Yagnesh Gamba. Welcome you to all on HTTP Automobile Engine, beginning of New Era, day two. So today we have an interesting topic of design of two-wheeler and today with us we have the Mr. Samajit Singh Vagela. So it is my duty and privilege to introduce the Mr. Samajit Singh. If we uh, see his uh, uh, graduation uh, academic record, then he has uh, uh, done his bachelor from Automobile Engineering, Edi Patel Institute of Technology. And I am very lucky to be a classmate of him since 2004 to 2008. So as yesterday, uh, Dr. Bukte was told that uh, SEA started the first in 2007, Baha SEA event. And uh, I, I would uh, very happy to say that the Mr. Samarjit Singh also be a part of that uh, team at that time in 2007 then he has completed a uh, bachelor in automobile to 2004 to 2008 and he has joined a masters in national institute of design transportation and automobile design in 2015 then as a part of program and uh, exchange program in industrial design of college he has uh, joined as a university of Cincinnati and he has done the uh, great post graduation program. If we see the experience of Mr. Samarjit Singh, then he has started his career after the educational uh, all qualification. As he has started, First, as a national car company, as a business executive, sales and service since 2008 to August uh, 2010. Then he has joined as a GVK group, as a manager service since 2010 to 11. Then he has continuously get the opportunity and joined Mahindra Two Wheeler Limited as a territory manager from 2012 to 2013. As a technical manager, he has worked with the Hero Motocrop Limited year of 13 to 15, and also joined as a uh, a member of Indeed Design Studio in automobile design in turn. Then he also take the project as a Maruti Suzuki India Private Limited interior and exterior accessories design and he has successfully done the interior design of interior and exterior design of electric version of Vedana for 2025. And currently he is working with Yulu Bikes Private Limited as a design lead. And today I am very happy to see you, Mr. Samarjit Singh with us. He has also achieved the so many awards during his uh, professional career and in academic uh, uh, during the academic. So if I talk then Car Design Academic Award in competition arranged by the Association of Promoting Electric Vehicle in 2017, Tokyo, Japan. So he has also received the 
so many awards in designing so designing as a profession and a part of his career so i welcome you mr samardit singh and i request you to take the charge of this session and continue with the presentation welcome sure. mr samardit singh thank you so much agnes it's like uh, i mean like for thank you so much for this generous introduction first of all it's like i like i'm like literally overwhelmed by the information which you gave so i'm really happy to hear from you that so any yeah, app so i'll start the session and again it's like it's, it's a great opportunity to me for uh, opportunity for me to you know be present and do something with you know uh, back to your alma mater and like alumni and professors of adit so it's really great so i'll just take you to the journey of our session today and uh, today we will uh, conduct a session in a four different parts so there are like four different chapters you can say so first uh, we'll start with the design process i'll i'll introduce you to the basic design process that how automobile design works uh, focused on a two wheeler but again design process for four wheelers and two wheelers is similar i mean more or less it's the same but there are like two technical uh, things which are different from four wheeler and two wheeler between the four wheeler and two wheeler so that we'll understand that and uh, second session is i'll i'll show you uh, a small video of uh, bmw design process like how internationally it is being done so then you can get a more idea about it and uh, then i i'll i'll conduct a live demo i'll show you like how actually it is being done i'll i have my sketch pad and all so we'll do some automobile design here live and i'll explain you very briefly because we have a limitation of time as well so we'll do that and after that i'll i'll explain you where i'm working right now and what is the future and what what kind of com uh, my company is into right so that's how we'll go in the session meanwhile if you if, if someone feels like having any questions so we'll just keep it as a interactive session so whenever someone wants to ask any question you can just stop me then and there and uh, we can just um, you know interact and then we can just resolve the query and then then move on so that's what the course of the uh, this uh, two hour session will be and uh, yeah and then i'm starting the uh, you know the, i mean I'm, then i'll share my screen with you now and then we can start the session right so okay yeah guys just let me know whether my screen is visible or not and i'm i'm audible and visible or not just let me know that just a minute so every participants are requested to been uh, samardit singh wagala presentation yes it is uh, visible visible right chal yes. great then i'll start the session yeah okay okay so uh, design uh, the word itself is a, you know kind of a uh, very explanatory word but in a way if you think in a detail so design is normally you know uh, retrospectively considered to be aesthetic you know related to aesthetics of the vehicle or aesthetic of anything for that matter let it be a product design let it be even a furniture design so design is always related to you know that how it looks but that's where the whole problem starts that design is not only about the looks it's like how can you solve the problem like existing problem of our society effectively and you know uh, how can you make it interestingly uh, how can you make it in, i mean how how are you solving that uh, problem interestingly that's what, so that's what the design is all about so that's where uh, i'll take you through that journey so if you see this slide that's where it, it it's like uh, uh, uh just give me a second yeah sorry yeah you can sorry to disturb yeah this one is sorry for that interruption so uh if i have to uh, explain you again that what is a design for that matter and uh, this this slide explains everything right more or less it's explain everything so we start with a complex problem we don't know where to go like how to solve this problem there are lots of challenges the manufacturing side are a lot of, lot of challenges or let's say material wise there are a lot of challenges and then how to execute it 
so company wants something else and the, then you provide some else solution so there are a lot lots of the, the i mean you know the chaos which you see on your left side of the screen that is all where the problem starts and eventually design helps in you know uh, um, and control that chaos and it helps in resolving those problem and you know smoothly lends to the solution so that's what it is and if i have to explain you further in detail in like in in tangible terms then design is a creativity plus priority it's a mixture of both so how can you uh, how can you be how, how can you solve the problem by being a creative and prioritize all the requirement and then solve the issue so that's what the design is all about and that, in this two words uh, according to me like every every aspect of design is covered and every discipline of design for that matter is covered within these two words so that's what that's what i feel right so when we talk about automotive industry like how, and what is the role of design in that automotive industry so whenever we see any vehicles on the road and and we quickly um, make any judgments you know that vehicle is looking good or not or whether there is some exciting element which attracts us to see uh, that vehicle in detailers or, you know something it, it it gives you a wow factor and then then it tells you that that what is what is this new vehicle so that's where the design is that's the first step of design you can say and if you see in automotive industry uh, then we always know that um, there are a lot of challenges to be met but if you see the vehicle design process in itself so we'll start with a segment or let's say concept brief now what do we mean by that that uh, even a marketing team or let's say some market research team will come up with some brief based on the requirement of a management that we want to develop some uh, concept they it will it would it won't be clear in a first stage so there will be lots of iteration happening there but it starts with a simple sentence and like you know a brief then what happens is that engineering team gets involved into it then management team decides that where to you know uh, uh, where to uh, where to place this product into the uh, our product uh, uh, i mean product lineup and then once that decision is being made then engineering team gets involved and then they fix the vehicle architecture now what do i mean by vehicle architecture it's like fixing the wheel base is like fixing the overall length of the vehicle it's like uh, i mean understanding where the engine will sit whether uh, are we going with a four seat or two seat are we going for the race vehicle or like commercial vehicle or like passenger vehicle so what will be the roof height what will be you know ingress and egress uh, of this vehicle will be so all this architecture or uh, or let's say how the chassis will flow across the vehicle once this everything will be fixed then it is handed over to the design department so design department normally works on that architecture so whatever the surface is or whatever the outer exterior body or whatever the interior parts which you see in in the vehicle it's being done on that architecture so like so those technical parameter is being fixed first and then design plays you know uh, they start sketching and then they design uh, start designing something and then they come up with some so interact uh, interesting solutions to it then once vehicle architecture and design is fixed it is again handed over to engineering team and then they try to accommodate like whatever has been designed or if something needs to compromise you know something needs to be changed mm -hmm. from engineering point of view then those all things will be taken into the consideration and then it's a back and forth process so design and engineering team cannot run separately so design and engineering team will always run you know back and forth like parallelly you can say, i mean you can say that it's very interactive or very engaging uh, teamwork happens there and once those all parts are fixed once engineering part uh, is con i mean engineering team is convinced and once the design team is convinced and once the final output is ready then the pro uh, vendor procurement or uh, you know when the supply chain comes into picture and then the whole process uh, will be started and then the manufacturing like how the manufacturing will be done like how the qa qc will be done then marketing team takes over that how to you know make ad campaigns of this thing and then again then training of the dealers then all things will come after sales survey like how everything will come so this is a complete process flow and the placement of design and uh, obviously everything will be customer focused everything will be customer oriented so that's that's a prime focus of each and every department so that's how the design process uh, works i mean for that matter any vehicle development process works into the uh, uh, in, in, into any oems or any companies so we'll go to the next stage that is if we go into more details about like what is design process then 
right so once we have the brief that that we want to develop this vehicle then we understand the constraint that is a vehicle architecture and inputs from the engineering team then we prepare a mood board right now this mood board is like what kind of character this vehicle will convey like what kind of um, you know elements that vehicle will have whether it will look very aggressive whether it will look very cute or whether it will look very luxurious vehicle so this all things will be derived from the mood board like it, it tells in indirectly you can say it tells the mood of the vehicle like when whenever you see that vehicle so what kind of first impression that vehicle will give so that's a mood board i'll explain you that in a detail as well we have i have prepared a mood board for you so that you can understand then the sketching happens it everything starts with a pen and paper and it's like a religion of a designer you can say in, indirectly that um, you know we sketch a lot we sketch again and again till the time we achieve that something is something interesting has been created and uh, those uh, those sketches are then converted into uh, you know 3d model and everything like that so those sketches uh, should match with uh, uh, you know it should convey some design language so let's say if we see a ktm vehicle or it's a ktm duke or any any sort of that uh, that segment of vehicle so we always feel that ktm looks very aggressive right like ktm looks uh, you know very sporty and very racy so those kind of elements you can say it's a design language in a technical term but uh, as a like common man we understand that that this vehicle looks very sporty or luxurious or anything like that right and then this final renders happen and so once design language is fixed once sketches are being done so then we give surfaces to the vehicle we we color the vehicle in like you know, a lot of different modes and a lot of different mediums and one of this uh, brief render session i'll conduct today so that i can explain you that what exactly it is to design a vehicle right and then the 3d model happen and then once 3d model is being done it is uh, handed over to the clay department now clay department um, is it plays a very vital and very important role because company cannot invest on on like such a huge amount on based on just 3d model so they want to feel the vehicle they want to see the vehicle before it's being uh, handed over to the production team so this clay model this clay lab will prepare a one is to one scale full uh, uh, clay model out of it of, of the 3d model with other out of out of mill, with the help of milling or with a you know a clay I mean, with hands and all so i'll explain you that also so the once that clay model the thing is being done so that designer can feel the surface he can uh, visualize that what what he has imagined it it's been converted uh, well in reality or not so those things are there and once that part is being done simultaneously color material and trim uh, uh, teams and graphics teams will come together and then they will fix the color of the vehicle that in this color this vehicle looks exciting and they'll come up with some color scheme they'll come up with a good leather interior or like whatever the interior the company wants to you know give to that customer so they'll come up with that range what kind of graphics uh, they want to you know place on this vehicle those kind of stuff so if you see the ktm then ktm has very aggressive graphics it's a full of graphics you can say because that vehicle demands that so that's what it is and then uh, we'll make the the first prototype and then you can say that it's a pre-production model one and normally it is once uh, the clay model is being done so this is like kind of a first functional model you can say it ha it will have an engine it will have a brief um, uh, you know surfaces and few mechanical components by which the vehicle will run and we'll see we'll test across the terrains and across the i mean you know, you know several hours of uh, uh, testing will be done and all those things will be sorted out and then the pre-production two will happen and then the final production model comes into the picture and that's how and then the production line is finalized and then the supply chain is finalized and everything goes after this so that's what the design process in a brief i have explained you and uh, i'll i will talk more in details about this sir so let's say if i have to compare between what is uh, car design and motorcycle design so what kind of difference you see in normal design process so more or less this will give you idea of about each and every industry the way they work right so if you see on the left hand side it's a tesla and uh, on the right hand side it's a cbr you can see that right so if you see it's like a, you can see the volume of it right and the, the volume there is a huge difference uh, in the volume uh, i'm sorry it's a apache and then it's a huge difference in the volume and then uh, if you see that a car contains the interior why the motorcycle does not have any kind of interior right uh, if you see the human relation with the form in the way uh, uh, in the uh, car then human sits inside the car 
so human does not have a big role play while designing the exterior of a car while in motorcycle design human plays a vital role the way he will sit on the vehicle and the way he'll uh, arrest the sitting posture while sitting on the vehicle so those things plays a vital role very important role in the two wheeler design right then how is a human machine interaction in four wheeler that's another thing and then uh, and in two wheeler it's more emotional you can say and what kind of powertrain are we using in uh, four wheeler whether it's an electric vehicle whether it's a conventional ic engine vehicle or when it comes to motorcycle that what kind of engine it has those things plays a huge role and even the engine itself plays a part of a uh, you know crucial component in the uh, in the frame design as well if you see uh, like few vehicles like uh, uh, let's say a uh, uh, hero honda hero honda hulk can also you will see there is a cut in a chassis so where the engine is fixed because engine itself is playing a part of a chassis so that is being done uh, decided by the design team and engineering team as well so those kind of things then uh, what kind of design language uh, they both will carry four wheeler and two wheel that's again uh, plays a huge role and then proportion so that's a first and the foremost thing for the any designer to start his design like to fix the proportion and to fix the proportion the vehicle architecture or the constraint from the engineering team uh, plays a huge role right? so 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 those things are there i'll explain you that in a detail as well and then what are the detailing part of it let's say how the headlight will look what kind of uh, material i'm using what will be my handle grip and all what kind of visor i'm using those things you know components covering so component coverings means like how many components i'm uh, exposing to the environment and how many components i'm like covering with it so if you see the right hand side bike apache so it's a, it has this front fairing of it so you can't see engine up frontly but if you see minutely there is a chassis exposed in that design so something like that you know and then the wheels so obviously which kind of wheels are we using uh, alloy wheels and which type of alloy wheels are we using what kind of brakes are we using so those are the these are the like you know important uh, uh, points uh, you can say when we have to con consider while designing a car or while designing a motorcycle for that matter right and these are the like few types of two wheelers obviously there are like more than this and when uh, when it comes to ev then again there is a huge segment but more or less each and every two wheel will fall into some or some or the other you know it can it it contain i mean it this covers the like you know 60 70 percent of the two wheelers so there are like standard type of two wheelers we see this every day there are like few off-roaders then a tourer bike then sports bike i mean everyone is familiar with this uh, segment of the bike i'm pretty sure about it and then there is a cruiser type and scooters obviously right so let's say we understand the design process of ktm so then we can whatever i'm saying so it should make sense to you as well so we'll learn through some few examples and then we'll see how it turns out right so this is a something mood board you can say so if you see this bike once again right so this vehicle looks very aggressive in its nature it looks that it is up to something right it gives that excitement feeling it conveys that excitement feeling to the its user right and if you see the chassis it's exposed chassis if you see its headlight it's like very aggressive stiff headlight and you see like very uh, vibrant colors is being used in this vehicle you know so so the uh, fr from which place this this all uh, design language has been arrived or let's say derived from this so that's why the mood board play a, a very vital role in that so if you see the images in this mood board so if you see that it like images of ice breakage there is a lava you know there is a sharp knife then there is a cracks of the wood and uh, there is some tactile features are that so obviously th there is uh, some futuristic element involved and then there is a soothing experience you if you see the uh, you know uh, the the right hand side image then that it conveys that so more or less if you see that this mood board conveys that this vehicle should have aggressive performance it should have a futuristic looks it should have a vibrant orange color that's what they are designed uh, defining right now but simultaneously when a rider's right set it should be a meditation for him it should be a adrenaline you know like you know i mean excitement uh, for him it should be it should give a very um, pleasant feeling while riding it like it should give that excitement feeling to the user 
So these mood boards are uh, are for that thing to you know derive few things. So designer gets inspired from this uh, uh, elements. Design designer understand that feelings that what uh, feeling he wants to convey uh, to through his sketches and through his design. So these are the inspiration board. You can say these are inspiration for that. So when we'll go to the next stage, once I have set my mood of that vehicle or of that uh, particular car. So then I start the sketching. As I explained earlier, everything will start with a pen and paper. Then I'll try to do something with the pen and paper that how, how can I convey those uh, feelings uh, through my sketches. So if you see, there are like bold red lines on the bottom left side of the sketch. So which, which, creates, a, which creates a very exciting sketch. So if you see overall wheelbase of the vehicle and overall, uh, you know, the fuel tank and seat proportion of the vehicle. So it gives very balanced approach. It gives a very, you know, strong uh, and robust uh, uh, a feeling to that particular sketch. So you see there are like sharp lines which conveys an aggressive body language or, or let's say design language of that particular vehicle. So those are the character lines you can say. And those character lines defines the uh, language of the vehicle. So, so that's what it is. And every every designer has to go through this process. There will be like n number of sketches uh, before um, he lands to a final sketch. It can be hundred, it can be two hundred. It depends on the satisfaction level of the designer, or it depends on that requirement which he wants to convey to his customer or, or his user. So that's there. And then if you see, once the proportion are set, then the overall surface, like how the surface will flow into the vehicle. So if you see the center uh, sketch, so there is a, a steep bends in that orange color, which flows across uh, through, you know, fr uh, which flows covering the fuel tank and all. So those things are there. So those are the surfaces you can say. So, or like body panels, you can say. And then the next stage happen is about the details, like how the headlight will look like, how the side indicators will look like. So those things are there, right? Then the second thing is the render part. So you see there is a, on the top left uh, side, the designer is sketching something digitally directly on the screen. So that's a normal process, which every designer does that. So whenever he finalizes some sketches, so he wants to see that how the color, how the surfaces will look alike. So the, he immediately takes that sketch into digital world and then he starts rendering about it, uh, on it, right? So the, the images which you see on the right side, those are the renders. We call it as right, and I'll I'll, I'll show some uh, brief rendering right uh, right now after this session, right? And then once those sketches are being done with the renders and all, then the design team will come together and then they will decide, they will discuss further that what how it is looking, that what needs to be changed, how can we improvise further, or is it a perfect sketch that we are looking for? So all those things will be fixed, or will be discussed. And then detailing part will happen, like how the headlight, how the inside of a headlight will look alike. So how the side indicators will look alike. Then all those things will, uh, you know, takes place. Of, of obviously the same process. Everything starts with the pen and paper. And once the sketches is being finalized, then the uh, rendering will happen in the digital world. So that's why. And then once the renders are being fixed, then it goes to the you know 3D environment. And that's where the whole model is created. And we call it, I mean, the image which you see on the left side, it is a 3D model. And image which you see on the right side, those are the 3D renders. So now there are lots of softwares available, which allows us to, you know, 3D render the any model. So we apply uh, colors, material, and what type of finish we are looking for, or what kind of lighting we are looking for on that vehicle. So everything will be placed in that 3D environment, and then we'll visualize it. Obviously, augmented reality and virtual reality is also helping now to visualize uh, the model in you know in proper uh, details and with the proper proportions and everything like that. So this is a very uh, crucial stage of design, you can say. And uh, once this is being done, then it goes to the clay modeling. And that's where the whole clay modeling happens. So clay modeling happens with the help of a 3D model. So if a uh, designer wants to meal that model, then the milling will happen. And if he wants to sculpt with her hands, then the hand, uh, you know, sculpting will happen. So here at this stage, designer will understand his design and then he can touch the surface. He can feel that surface. So whatever the manipulation he wants to do there, he can do then and there. So that's, that's again a very crucial stage of design. And then he will check 
whether uh, his surfaces have been come out of really nice or not, whether the proportions are looking nice or not, whether the design language is conveying proper messages or not. So they will touch and feel along with the design team, along with the clay team, along with the management team, and those things will be fixed. So if you see the bottom uh, left corner, so the clay model part, if you'll see, it's just a 50% of the vehicle. But everything else is just a vehicle architecture. So that's how it works, right? The ones the uh, vehicle architecture as a chassis along with the engine position and everything is fixed. So above it, the clay modeling process will happen. And together, they convey a proper model, uh, you know, design language and design element to it, right? So if you see a KTM bike, then you can clearly say that a person who is sitting on the vehicle feels like that he's going for some racing. Right. And if you see the aerodynamic flow or let's say flow of a design, then the human element, once it is added into the design, it looks very pleasing. Right. So that's why the whole uh, package we are uh, al we always uh, aim for, like that it should convey the exact feeling what we have initially thought of. So that's what it is. And then the pre-production pre model will happen. So this is a Husqvarna, now it is there in market. So this whole process from selecting a brief from reaching out to the model it takes a lot of time so it takes like some time it take it might take four years three years or sometimes it takes more than that and um, if you if you talk about the Husqvarna that we are we were hearing about the Husqvarna from almost uh, 2016 or 2017 that they are going to come but then it took almost three years for, uh, for them to you know land into our market so it's not just a limited a lim uh, a limitation of a design team uh, itself there was a whole process which was involved into it let's say homologation or everything like that but if we talk about design process itself so sometime it might take two years just to come up with a um, you know, perfect sketch which uh, satisfy all the requirement or sometime it takes just six months to reach to that stage so you never really know that where, what is a um, uh, at that point like how much time it should take more or less in a simple language one can say that that if it is matching all the requirement which is being asked for then the design uh, i mean then the design is done so that's what it is right and now we'll reach to the next stage of it so i'll explain you whatever i have explained so far the bmw design process will explain the same in more detail so it's a seven minute of video so i'll just request you to please uh, be uh, you know attentive about it so i'll just uh, show that video to you yagnesh i'm still uh, audible and visible right everything is going okay. yes yes Okay. Yes. This video is audible, right? It is audible okay. and visible also. Okay, okay, great. Our design team consists of several distinctive characters. We have very different personalities with very different needs. And each of us is more or less at home in their own special bike set. Because of this, we are a group of individualists. There are guys who travel the world on their bikes. And there are also motocross and trial freaks, as well as hardcore racers. Only those who have pushed their bikes to the limit know what bikes are about. Sketching is the beginning of the design process. It means bringing ideas to life. Every designer has got his own style, which is good. Sometimes the first sketch is the best, sometimes it's the last. There are no standards for creativity.
designing a motorcycle means a lot more than just defining its proportions, surfaces and details. It also means designing all the technical parts. Therefore, designers, engineers and modelers use the Powerwall to make sure all technical requirements are met right down to the detail. We don't just draw bikes, of course we ride them, because only then you know what it's all about. Yes, we have some petrol in our blood. Many of us work on bikes in their spare time. We maintain, customize, restore, or simply collect bikes. We want to perceive our motorcycles as something personal. At work, you have to meet many requirements and design bikes according to mass production. But in your free time, you are unrestricted, an independent person who can give free rein to your personal ideas. of us own several bikes, all kinds of segments, modern and high-tech. And once in a while you can see the guys riding out on their vintage bikes. Play modeling is a very important phase of the design process. This is when the two-dimensional drawing becomes a piece of three-dimensional work for the first time. When the clay has become solid, the model is painted to make it look like a real motorcycle. You have to see and to feel the bike and be able to sit on it to bring it to the final perfection. Later in the process, the design team often meets to discuss the refinement and quality details, such as forms, surfaces and point lines. We are very proud of the high material quality of our riding gear. Naturally, it is instrumental to us that our garments protect the rider in every way. But we also find it important that our clothes fit perfectly and give the rider the best climate on the bike. Depending on the segment, the garments do not only meet different requirements, but also meet different styles. Cuts and colors signify the individual segment. Our color and trim department is responsible for the colors, surfaces and graphics of our bike. They underline the bike's shape and highlight its character. Excellent color and trim gives the bike the perfect final touch. This moment is amazing. This is the moment when we see the result of what the whole team has been working on over the past years. 
Mein Name ist Edgar Heinrich, Head of Design, BMW Motorrad. Fascinating stuff, isn't it? So, yep. Okay. So, any questions so far? I just wait for like two minutes. So if anyone has any questions so far, then I'm like more than happy to answer it. If not, then then move to the next stage of the session. Jagnesh, can we move to the next stage then? If you are not expecting any questions. Uh, definitely. If uh, any participants having the question, then uh, feel to free ask to Mr. Samarji. Okay, no issues then. Yeah. Are you expecting? Okay. Okay, no issues then. Uh, so then, uh, and obviously, I have one more point that you don't need, you know, uh, I mean, academic background to design something these are like you know bizarre bike design so design is up to like what you want to convey to masses so there are like few examples of it like very bizarre very aggressive kind of stuff and like, you can say that so some crazy thing is happening here look at the tires of it look at the, the whole skeleton so it's up to complete it, it's completely up to a person's imagination like how he wants to convey that thing so so that that's the stage and uh, that takes us to uh, the next stage of the session and in which i'll show you, you in in the video earlier you have seen there were like few guys were sketching something on the screens and all so i have the same kind of screen with me but it's a little bit less you know movability of that uh, uh, screen is less so i have brought my sketchpad so this that's my sketchpad so i'll do something here so I'm just uh, okay. arranging a few things. Okay. So, Yagnes, I'm just disconnecting the screen uh, for like one minute. Is okay. okay, okay, fine. To set up the few things. You know? just... okay. Okay, the screen is visible now again? Yes, yes. Okay, great. So then you can see I have sketched something uh, just very quickly to, to show you that how the design process works. The sketch is still with me right now. So I just uh, scanned it and I just took it into a digital environment into Photoshop. And uh, here you, you can see uh, I have done a few things like there is a ellipse or let's say wheel. So whenever we take it to a digital environment, we have want to understand that what is a proportion of the vehicle, right? So normally we measure the proportion of the vehicle with the help of a tire size. I right? say so, so here, if you see carefully, then I'm just measuring the this uh, uh, length of this vehicle with the help of a tire size. So if you see, there are like three wheel uh, length between the first uh, uh, between the front wheel and the rear wheel. So that gives me a kind of a balanced proportion. And if you will see the height of the vehicle, if I have to uh, measure that, then al we also measure that in terms of uh, the size of a tire itself, right? So that helps me to uh, fix the proportion of the vehicle. If I have to see, if, uh, if I have to tell you that what will be the front body, you know, what will be the proportion of the front body? So again, we can measure that in a, with a reference to the tire size. And the same goes with the rear part as well, right? So whenever we uh, see, whenever we see any kind of uh, vehicle, let's say if I have to tell you about Rolls-Royce Phantom, 
So if you'll observe Rolls Royce Phantom carefully, so then there is a huge uh, area, the front area before the wheels. So and uh, rear part is very uh, uh, small in terms of uh, size, you can say. So that gives you a very luxurious feeling, right? So those things are there. So tire size helps us in defining the proportion of the vehicle. So once we fix the sketch, let's say, once we have fixed the sketch, so first thing we do is to create uh, a ground where the vehicle is sitting for the vehicle. So let's say I'll just uh, create one ground here, like very quickly, right? Okay. So you can just stop me in between wherever you want, wherever you feel like. I'm, I'm, I'm all up for it, no issues at all. And uh, yeah, I've also done some pre-work about it. So I have fixed uh, some boundaries of the vehicle. So if you can see that. So once uh, this thing is being done, then we'll import the wheels into the vehicle. And just to understand or just to fix the wheels, we don't have to uh, you know, straight away go for the wheel design just for the sake of it. And normally we do the wheel design very much in detail, but here just for the sake of easiness and we have a time constraints for it. So I have done that work already and uh, I'll, I'll just take some ready-made images you know, of the available wheels. So these are like simply downloaded from the Google itself and um, we'll just fix that first. So we get a proper idea that what actually we are talking about. So fixing the wheel size gave you a great advantage to uh, to set those things right. Right. And so once that is being done, I'll do some more work on the you know, fixing the ellipse part and all. So I'm fixing this whole thing here. Okay, so my wheels are more or less fixed. So I'll just adjust them. Same thing we'll do with this will also. Okay, so once wheels are fixed, then I'll start, you know, giving surfaces to the vehicle. So if you'll see here, I'll select new layer and i'll just start giving few some colors you know to the body you know like how exactly it will look like even before doing that i'll do go with one more step that is fixing this uh, blackout area so what what normally we do is once we have everything with a pen and paper sketch so then we uh, sketch everything digitally on this platform. So let's say if I have to show you something. So this this kind of strokes, this kind of uh, you know, so that there are you can see a lot of lines here, a lot of uh, you know roughness, a lot of uh, hazy lines you see here. So we uh, fix one line and then we sketch it over it. So likewise we do. Right, so this is this, that's how the whole scar is being sketched, and once that is being done, so then I'll black out few areas. Let's say this is a DLO, we call it as a daylight opening area. We'll black out the front windshield, we'll black out this uh, windows, we'll black out the tail light, we'll black out the headlight, we'll black out the front scoop and the rear scoop. Everything will be black out, so then we can just play with the uh, uh, mid surface, you know, and in order to do that. I'll just take this and I'll just fill it with some colors.
I can also play uh, with this. You know, let's say if I don't like to put you know headlights here, so I can just change the position. It's completely up to me wherever I want to play. It's, it's a kind of a freedom which you get. There is no fixed rules that once you have sketched something, then you have to stick to it. You can just play the way you want. It's all up in, in your hand. It's all in the um, creative hands of a designer that how he wants to play uh, play with the overall thing he wants to convey. Okay, so more or less I have just black out this parts. So now I can sketch with whatever the way I want. Okay. If you see uh, a car, whenever we see a car, so normally uh, here to just briefly render it, I'm uh, coloring it in a gray color so that we can understand uh, light and shadow in a detailed manner. And normally we, then we can just change the color of the car. It's some completely up to us. So for example, I have, I'm just coloring this car. Okay, I have done this thing. Now everything is black out. I mean, colored out, okay. So this is done. So now this is the first level of it. So let's say, and even before that, I can just put it under the wheels. So that gives me a more idea about it than what actually I'm doing, right? Then simultaneously, I'll quickly, uh, you know, uh, check out my sketch, the, whether I'm going in the right direction or not. So I'll just keep that for the reference. Okay, like what actually I want to do with it. And then I'll start you know, sketching again. So this this exercise is being done basically to uh, understand the uh, overall volume that how vehicle volume is coming out after a design. So this gives us idea about it. So normally what I'm doing here right now is just to give you an idea that uh, currently I'm fixing the vehicle that this is a side view of a vehicle. And then I'm imagining that light source uh, will come from the top. So that's how it will have a light here. That's how it will have a light here. Then this part will be dark a little bit. Then this will be more dark. So something like this, that's, that's what I'm, uh, uh, a taking approach and that's that's how everything is being calculated and designed right so that is there so once we have fixed this volume then we can all obviously go with the second part the advanced stage of it
normally this part is being called as a light catcher right so normally when the light comes from the top side this part always gives some highlight so this is uh, this gives an overall idea to uh, you know uh, a user that how this vehicle will look like and i can this bottom bar will always be a dark so then i can just uh, black it out with uh, some dark light because light will not reach to this areas right so then i can just simply do these things so basically when we do something like this it's always fun so it's up to you know it's like up to designers creative like where, where does, he, does he wants to take his uh, car so it's always fun to do this kind of stuff So this gives us a bit brief idea about it. Then there is always another line we call it as a character line. So this defines the character of the vehicle, whether this vehicle should look, uh, you know, uh, sporty or aggressive, something like that. So we can do that even. So now you can understand the volume of the vehicle, right? If I have to draw a line here, like how the vehicle surface line will look when the lights are falling into it so if you see there is a light falling here then there is a this uh, windshield uh, sorry the side windows will be covered and then this part is catching light so then it is it, i can understand that it's an embossed part now there is a slight cut of this character line then again there is a small uh, you know uh, depth here and then and then again this light catcher part is coming okay and again there will be a bottom part so let's say if you see this so this this gives us a you know contour lines so we call it as a contour lines and this gives us an idea that what actually we are doing here how the surfaces are flowing so this is whether it is going with uh, as per our imagination or not so this gives us that idea right then obviously there will be uh, some uh, light catch up part on the rear side as well the rear bumper as well so we can just quickly make that one And obviously, whenever we see these wheels are the most, you know, wider most part of the vehicle, apart from the rear view mirror. So then if I have to see that, I have to understand the volume, that how volume will flow, I can just simply, you know, make one. Okay. Simultaneously, we have to do it from you know, the rear part as well. So basically, it's a fun activity. It's like we always like doing this all stuff. Same thing goes with the uh, backlight as well.
we can just do whatever we feel like it's all you know, to us. Okay, so if I take this sketch to a proper level, then we can understand how the volume was flowing. So what we are trying right now is to sculpt the volume out of it. So earlier it was looking very flat. Now we can see that it, there is some, uh, you know, some volume is uh, taking place there. So that's how it is. And I'll just sketch one more character line. This bottom part more uh, likewise we can just play with it then there will be always a light which will be reflected from the ground to the surfaces again that will also create uh, some highlights and some darkness in the vehicle we can sketch that too Yeah, so we can do this, and then obviously, and let's say if I have to. It create a rear view mirror, then how it will look like. So this is our rear view mirror, then there will be a light and shadow play over here also. And obviously the bottom part will be yeah, dark. And there will be a shadow of it also along with the car surface.
see this thing now can give you an idea about if I have turned on the sketch, then you can understand that how things were flowing. And earlier it was just, uh, you know, just as flat sketch. And now you can understand the volume of it and how exactly this will look like. And also play with this part. Say just to give you a quick idea that how the tail, tail lights will look like, just to understand that quickly. And here we can create a few part of it. Let's say if I want to sketch something very quickly, tail light should look like this. Then we can just do that. Right. Same way we can go with the uh, uh, headlight also. I think there is oh, some error here happened. Okay. And there will be obviously glass will be transparent, so there will be few ref some reflection, and then will be we can see that what is happening. So we can see normally sit, uh, vehicle, uh, vehicle sit in the vehicle, in the car. So then we can just draw that. Area where the OR dashboard will come. The same process goes with the two wheeler design as well. So there is nothing you know, very different I'm doing here. Okay, so this gives us an idea that this is kind of a transparent thing which is coming like this. So we have to see, let's say it's a kind of a futuristic car and I want to create one headlight of it smart looking headlight so we can just simply create a shape yeah, so you can understand the volume like how the car is looking like so earlier it was just a flat now you can understand the volume and simultaneously, we can just play something with the background as well. Oh, let's say I'll switch on this. Then you can see a few errors are there. So, and just, just get rid of those errors. Maybe let's see. <clears throat> So normally, which I'm the things which I'm doing right now, it takes a week's time, you know, to reach to a perfection. But just I'm giving you a just gist of it. But each and everything has to be defined when whenever we want to, uh, you know, make it to the final stage. Okay.
Mm -hmm. You know, this gives us an uh, in background gives us an idea uh, that how things will look like. Right, so when we can just create few highlights as well. Just to give some interesting element to the vehicle, you know, something with the fluorescent color or something. Let's say we bring that and how it will look. Right. Right, so this gives us an idea that this is how the design process works. Right. We can even make the background more darker. That's completely up to us. So if I switch off, if switch off the sketch, then also you can understand that there is some volume play that how the car will look like and how the light and shadow will place. So this type of things, designer pre prepares for the first review and something like that. And then um, it goes to the next level, refinement, further refinement, weeks time of this render. And because there will be each and every surface will be de defined. It, it won't be as rough as this. So everything will be fixed and then it will go for the further review and but for this short time i have just created this rough render i hope it helps you to understand how the design process works yeah guys i'll stop the second session here then is that okay yeah it is fine great great then so any questions so far about the design or about the process Okay, okay. Then uh, I'll switch to the next session of it. Ignis, is that fine? Yes, fine, fine. Carry uh, on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So now I'll start talking about uh, my company. So, which is uh, kind of you can say it's a new era of automobile. Uh, you know the way automobile is shifting, and everyone is aware about the electric shift, which every company is working right now. And that's where uh, my company is also working. But basically, we are into shared mobility, right? And even before jumping into the shared mobility stuff, I'll just briefly explain you that how my company is doing business, and how my company is like you know uh, uh, helping environment and automobile shift to change. So that's what it is. So uh, as you can see, that it's uh, related to solving uh, last mile com uh, connectivity problems. Uh, for the customer so how do we do it like we have a zone of our vehicles spread it across the city and uh, currently we are present in six cities across india one is bangalore then the mumbai then pune and ahmedabad that recently started and then delhi also and few cities are, and one is in orissa also bhuneshwar right so we are present in those cities and at that place we have defined our zones so a vehicle will be parked in that zone. Everything is uh, uh, app controlled. So you can say that a um, uh, customer can use start using our service through app and all. So once they go to that zone, a Yulu zone, we call it as a, and then they can unlock uh, the vehicle through the QR code. And then they can use the vehicle up to the time they want. And then they park the vehicle to the next uh, available Yulu zone, nearest Yulu zone to them. So that's that's what the basic philosophy of our company and that's how we are solving the problem so if i take you to the journey so we are like three years old company now it's a startup based in a bangalore and uh, these are our four founders so mr amit gupta rk mishra navin dachuri and heman gupta they all are very well versed with uh, with the industry experience and they are already uh, experienced in by um, of creating another startup as well i mean previously they were attached with another startup called inmobi so it's again a unicorn startup right now and so very successful team very strong team to, to work with um, so this is something about our founders and all so we'll not go much into detail about them so this is the this is a vehicle 
which is uh, designed in india uh, by us i mean so and it's completely suitable to our you know indian context and we have our overseas partners so they make vehicle for us and then we again uh, assemble the vehicle in india so this is the kind of a design and assemble in india vehicle kind uh, you can say that so you can if you see this vehicle just design it looks like a toy it's a very small vehicle right and uh, but it's the when when we are designing this vehicle the complete approach was how to solve the problems how we can give the customers of uh, how we can give uh, keep functionality as a topmost priority and then design everything around it right so this is what the miracle this is what our prime uh, uh, flagship product you can say and that's what the users are using it right now so it's if you see the battery is sitting on the floor where my cursor is moving right now so there is a sit where we have our telemetrics uh, and this is a completely connected vehicle this, i mean battery is designed by us vehicle is designed by us then it's telemetrics the iot or internet of things device which we call it as it's completely designed by us and so you can say it's a uh, in house everything is developed in house so you can say quite indian product and then if you see that um, it solves a lot of traffic congestion problems because if you are riding on this vehicle its size is so small that you will never uh, got stuck in the traffic you can always find a way out and india is a country of you know like, like cut marna and all that stuff so this solves the pur pur that purpose so it's a kind of unstoppable vehicle right because of the proportion and uh, we are partnered with uh, uber companies like uber and everything like that so even bajaj is backing up us now so we have like great tie ups uh, with the great companies and great tech support from them so so that's what uh, uh, ulu is about and basically if you ask our uh, like vision and mission so it's something like we want to solve the traffic congestion problems and we want to make our stop our users unstoppable so that's what the ulu is all about everything is tech control everything is app control and that's what it is but uh, i earlier i mean that's that's what about my company that's where i'm working right now but apart from this thing i mentioned one term called shared mobility so now that shared mobility is a very interesting you know it's a kind of a new era of uh, automotive world you can say and uh, this shared mobility means by we have seen the era of ola we have seen the era of uber like the way or rapido for that matter so for that i mean people are not uh, you know they don't have any uh, stigma or they don't have any problems sharing their um, uh, right with someone else someone unknown earlier it used to be considered as a taboo but not anymore right so that's where we are coming into the picture and uh, uh, this this app vehicle this app controlled vehicle can be shared by a lot of people and that's how, that's what i'll show you right now in a second that what do i mean by shared mobility when i say <clears throat> just give me a second okay right so what is we'll start with what is shared mobility and in that case shared mobility is something you know it's a transportation service and resource that are shared among users either concurrently or one after the another All right this includes public transit you know micro mobility we falls into a micro mobility segment because our vehicle is very you know small and the top speed of that vehicle is 25 kilometers per hour and service is sharing platform and uh, automobile bus you know car sharing rides on demand micro transit this all things are falling into shared mobility and it's a big umbrella it's a big umbrella so cities like bangalore where the traffic congestion is a huge problem you know young generation is not preferring to buy the vehicle we have seen that trend they rather prefer sharing the vehicle or renting the vehicle than to buy the vehicle and add into their assets and uh, deal with the problem with it, 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 it deals with the problem with, which already has uh, so those kind of stuff you know and so so those those things are shared mobility based when if you see like what is the most important part when it comes to ev plus the shared mobility so when we talk about the indian context so in that manner we have to design something you know against the vandalism or theft because india is a country where the vandalism rate is very high we have to make something which is safe reliable and you know ergonomically you know uh, good enough to handle the wide range of user 
then uh, design we have to design for reusability across all the form factors irrespective of, you know let's say for example we have a two three types of a different model but all model contains the same type of same form factor of a battery so that's how we have to design so like you know swappable parts and all so then it has to be obviously all weather design because india is blessed with blessed with a three or four seasons and then um, we have to see that whether uh, vehicle should not get rust vehicle should not get, you know uh, battery should not blast in the heated summer and all those stuff then obviously the vehicle has to be connected through iot and all then uh, design is is it's very easy to, it should be very easy to access and all and then design for operation and serviceability so as i mentioned earlier our vehicles are parked in a zone so we monitor the zone movement like which zone has the higher demand so then we shift a vehicle from one point to another so those things this those movement happens in a big uh, tempo right so then uh, our vehicle should be you know uh, sized enough so that we can relocate it we can't really give like very huge vehicles to our customers otherwise relocation will suffer relocation of vehicle will suffer so that one thing is there so if you see this is our current form factor very simple very minimal you know there is nothing it's uh, it's serving the purpose right but simultaneously when we talk about the indian context we faced you know these are the zones i'm talking about where our vehicles are parked right but uh, when we see the vandalism which i was talking about so you see people are not treating our vehicle nicely you know they will just we have this our cycles also right so people just you know push the cycles across the road these are the vehicles and there are like few other companies there is a company called bounce so they are they are uh, pro facing a problem of a you know theft because they are using this uh, same conventional vehicle like activa and all that stuff so people steal stuff from them, them their scooters and place it into their sco uh, you know uh, scooters and then they just use it so you you know see the government vehicles they one day they just came and then took up our all cycle from the zone without anyone's permission and all so those things are, so this is a kind of a you know dark side of the shared mobility business so we have to come across uh, we have to solve these challenges so wherever we, whenever we design something so you see this model which is very functional so when we upgraded this again so then uh, um, so th then that vehicle comes something like this so if you see, observe this vehicle minutely then we added suspension in the vehicle which was not there earlier if you see on the dark side I mean, on the rear side of the vehicle right so something like this then we added a footrest because when the person is carrying a cargo in this space so it he he or she needs a uh, you know uh, a footrest to rest his foot so we created that we created our own mobile holder right we created our own hook so which is like kind of you know when customer wants to place something then he can just add into uh, hook that thing into the hook and then uh, 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 do his business and we then we, obviously we have to play with the uh, robustness and rigidity of the vehicle so then we uh, made this rear fender very strong so if you see all this point so let's say bluetooth and iot device are making the bike smart so we have our own developed fully in house uh, developed uh, devices then battery status indicator there is a how much battery is left into the vehicle so these are all improvements done after this model so uh, in in last three years we realized few things that we need to improvise upon and then we changed the, those things into this current model and currently uh, our model has uh, this kind of features right then smart headlight for better visibility at night so let's say whenever it's it's kind of a, it's a similar technology like what audi has it so whenever the evening happens so then lights get switched on automatically so something like that then front and rear occurs to increase the comfort this uh, this vehicle doesn't earlier vehicle earlier version does not have the did not have the suspension for that then reflector at night for the road safety then wide comfortable seat then bag holder right and weather and shock proof battery compartment so those things are there right so and if we have to talk about the robustness of the vehicle then 90% of the parts are made out of metal right it's completely designed in house to suit requiring the users and and we continuously talk to a customer that how can we evolve this product how can we make it better how can we give a better experience to the customers so then theft proof so if i have to talk about like very minute thing so even the all the nut bolts which are used in this vehicle are like anti theft so or let's say you can say that or it's a torx screw which are used so that people don't steal it right because as I, i showed earlier the people does not take very good care of our vehicle and obviously it has to be suitable to indian roads so we wanted a suspension to be installed in the vehicle so that's how uh, we installed these things 
into it and this is the current development and then we are also coming up with the new versions and then improved design and everything like that so we always believe in a functionality over the aesthetics so if we can uh, solve the functionality and then uh, we we can create come up with something very interesting in looking and all so then that's our priority because it does not take much time to create something you know interesting but it takes a lot of time to to create something functional plus interesting and that's why the whole uh, if you refer to my slide number 1 that creativity plus priority that whole phenomena is been applied here so that's why we create something and when we understand the priority that how much priority it has and uh, that's how we create the whole design process and that's how we create the whole vehicle yeah so uh, that's it from my side yes so i'm again opening up a for uh, opening the forum for the question so or if you have any feedback just just let me know i'm all up for the discussions and everything like that yeah next you i think that's it from my side you can just take a charge of the session so uh, excellent presentation no oh, thank you thank you so much yeah we are nice to see you sir samardit yes 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 i'm all here uh gupta sir is joining with us oh that's great that's amazing that's amazing it's been so so long almost a decade sir face actually i have entire uh, session for you yeah and uh, it was like amazing sir. concept is also julu concept is very neat. thank you sir how many vehicles you have sir currently i have designed like three vehicles so they all will come very soon in the market so we are just expecting like within a span of 6 month they all three should launch so one is already there which is which you can see and upon which i have worked uh, a lot and then obviously we have our overseas partners so they help us in manufacturing it so that is there and uh, we take a help from bajaj as well so that so that's what it is Well, it's so good to see you, sir. After a long time, like really good to see you. How many of you are there at the Yulu? Sir, I'm not able to hear you properly. Can you? Uh, I think your voice is not audible. How big is your organization? Sir, we are currently with like 200 strong team. You can say that it's like three years old company. So three that, years old company. Yeah. How many vehicles you get so far? so we have current volume of like 10000 vehicles we have deployed across the city, uh, across the country in like six cities so and uh, yeah and then again also we we want we are expand we are expanding at a good pace right now so we are hoping that things will get doubled in like next one year that's what we are hoping as of now so, so it's then are you are you offer, are you offloading this uh, manufacturing of uh, bikes uh, at various locations or you are manufacturing at one location and then selling it to a different location so no, we are manufacturing at one location and then uh, we deployed across the city so let's say as i explained that so bajaj is our assembly partner so our vehicle gets assembled into bajaj and then from pune itself it gets uh, distributed across the cities so it gets distributed into mumbai exactly. and like, ahmedabad delhi bajaj. and bangalore so that's 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 what it is so you may you may in future have to look at Uh, some more assemblers, just yeah. like you know, cycle concept. Cycles are not assembled. nowadays uh, manufactured at one location because transportation takes. Uh, I mean, like uh, the toll very expensive right, for right, a bicycle right. to be transported. Right. Instead, you ship the uh, ship the components, and the assembly is done at the location where the vehicle is to be sold. So yeah, cycle think... dealers are assembling the cycles. Similarly, these vehicles can be assembled by the dealers. very rightly said sir so Thanks, we follow sure. the same kind of uh, uh, you know business structure for our vehicles itself so what we do is we have our own warehouse so what we do is uh, right. for the vehicles so we get a components from the hero itself so hero is helping us in okay. assembling the bike so they supply us the components we in uh, uh, we assemble the cycles in our warehouse and then we distribute across uh, wherever we want to distribute. so each and every city has you know multiple number of uh, warehouse so all the warehouse has the capability to assemble the cycle because cycle is like very light component so we don't have to worry much about it so absolutely that's how. so very that's nice very wish you all the best thank you sir thank you so much sir <laughs> thank you so much sir
any participants want to ask the question to Mr. Samarjit Singh, then it may feel too free to ask. So may I conclude this session, uh, uh, Samarjit? I think so, yes, yes. If we are not having questions, then we can definitely conclude the session. So after a long time, very happy to see you on uh, yeah, my yeah. platform. <laughs> also, it is a pleasure to hear a nicely present by you. Okay. And uh, as as we talk, uh, Gupta sir has also told every time that the traffic challenges in India is a very big challenge. And such product is come into market and overcome these challenges. And it will create an opportunity for the engineers. Right, right, right. Those who are interested in design, otherwise, as a faculty member, we having the back of mind that the design it means we having uh, 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 just design the component and validate. Yeah, but, yeah. And, uh, that's what that's why the whole thing is that that's what I wanted to uh, throw light that design is not only about aesthetics. So there is a different area in design that we can say that it is a big opportunity for the engineers those who are particularly Definitely. interested in a, a graphic design interior design and all that Absolutely. so i think uh, i would like to thank you uh, samarjit singh that joining with us and you have spent your valuable time thank you thank you so much it's a pleasure oh, pleasure is all mine yeah actually yeah, it's, it's so good to see you, see you. So I, I would like to thanks on behalf of Automobile Engine Department, thank you so much. and CVM University. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. All right, bye. Sir. I leave the session now. Then you, Yagnesh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.